Jay's vlog. Today we're going to talk about a subject that really touches my heart. Please can you push that magic subscribe button, can you push that other magic button which is the notification button and also can you leave a comment and make sure that you like my videos. I would much appreciate it. If we can get 50 likes for this video, I'll be absolutely happy. So, we are going to talk about a subject, as I just said, um, what really touches my heart. My best mate, Tony, is going through uh, bowel cancer at the moment. He's battling it. He's fighting it all the way. He's Mr. Positive. But back in 2000, my mum died of bowel cancer. And um, the technologies that they had back then wasn't what we got now. And it's so improved over the last 17 years, 18 years. Now we're going in and they can do a lot more. So I found out back in 2015 that my best friend Tony had bowel cancer. And I was very upset. But he has been Mr. Positive all the way. And we're going to do an interview with him today in the car. So that you guys can get an understanding of how it works, what happens, and what he did, and why he's so positive. And here we go, let's get So we're here with Tony, and Tony was suffering from um, bowel cancer, and he's just going through the treatment at the moment, so let's start the conversation, here we go. So Tony, when you first found out you had bowel cancer, how do you make you feel? <coughs> I think I know I had it anyway. Um, because I had problems. Digestions and going. Um, so I knew there was something that weren't right. And I got diagnosed in uh, June 2015, end of June 2015. Um, and then I, I had an operation in September. Uh, 2015 to remove part of my lower lower bowel. Uh, right onto A3. And they connected. Um, it lost to my bag. And I, in November I started 24 treatments of chemotherapy. Um, and that lasted until April. And then after April I asked to have the bag removed. Um, because all my blood tests and scans and whatnot came back as cancer free. Then I went into hospital in, again 2016 to have the bag removed. Um, I had serious complications, blood poisoning, um, kidney failure and a few other little things thrown in for good measure. Um, and they done a scan and again, I was still cancer free. But it wasn't right. You know you know your own body. You know whether you're right or not. And I wasn't right at all. So, in, after the, after the, um, the chemotherapy, um, in, um, after, the chemotherapy um, after about April time, um, I'd given it a good, a good seven, eight months to sort out and it still wasn't right so I phoned up and booked to see the uh, in one mile the, the left of the surgeon three. the surgeon and he done another couple of scans for me and we I came back to see him and he confirmed that the cancer had come back um, so, again, it was September. So I get a bit horny there, Tone. Yeah. Oh, it a was, horny motorcyclist, look. It was September. Um, and I went back into hospital and I had a bag put on the cover. I had 
25 sessions of radiotherapy and um, chemotherapy to run alongside it. Did those, did those sessions actually, you know, did they actually knock you for six or were you all right afterwards, Tony? Um, I was told because the amount of um, radiotherapy and chemotherapy that I was having, it would knock me a bit. Um, but it didn't. I still carried on working. I um, still got about, still managed to play with my grandkids. Um, so it wasn't until it all finished, so it finished on the 15th of November 2017, and probably midway through December, that's when it really started to hit me again. You know, uh, the tiredness sort of like came in. Um, but it, didn't really have adverse effects um, to me really that I could say. Um, it increased me going to, um, for a week quite quickly, having been used to having a bladder like a, a rhino, I can go out and have a three or four pints and not even not even go to the toilet. Um, but now, if I thought about drinking a glass of water, I would go. That was the only real change. Um, physically that I noted. Um, so I, I, I presume I, I think I was probably quite lucky that it didn't affect me as bad as it um, as it affects other people. So I, uh, yeah, and then beginning of January I've had a CT scan and an MRI scan um, and I'm waiting for a letter from the hospital now to see what the next is going to be. Um, I know my surgeon wanted to take away the rest of the bowel and take away the bladder, but I'm not too I'm not too bothered about the bowel being taken away because I've been up and I've had the bag for the last five or six months. Use the left lane to bag left on day 23. So I'm not really bothered about that. It's the bladder I don't want to. I mean, I said to him if, if the bladder hasn't got cancer in it, I don't particularly want to go down the route of, um, of having that taken away and me having two bags. Um, that would really sort of like restrict my working. Um, Tony, with the, um, the the bag you've got now, your colostomy bag, um, I mean, did it take you long to get used to it and used to having it, having that change of your body, you know, it coming out of your rear end, but now you've got it coming into um, a bag? Because I know that my mum had that bag when she had cancer and it was a struggle at first, but she had to get used to it. When I had the lower one, when I had the elostomy bag, um, it, was a, it, was a, right. it was a culture shock. Um, so yeah, I it was a culture shock at the beginning. Um, and you tend to get caught out and you end up it, it's a learn it, it's it's learning how to deal with it. It's learning what food you can eat, what food you can't eat. Um, so what kind of food can you eat now? Um because the um, stoma nurses were quite were quite good with me. They said, they said to me when when I came back when I come back off the ward, um, we'll come, and, and I spoke to the the, um, the stoma nurses when I had the colostomy bag put in. She said to me, "There's no reason why you can't go back to eating what you want, with in moderation, obviously, but start off with small. Um, I mean, green vegetables, you know, broccoli." In 180 yards, bear right on turning 23. That sort of thing um, can be. Bear right on turning 23. That can be a bit, you know, um, make you a bit loose, um, and you've got no real control over yourself, sort of thing. Uh, even though you've got a bag on, you end up getting up two or three times a night, sometimes three times a night, um, because you can't. You got your sleeping patterns restricted because you can't roll over, you can't lay on your front, you can't sleep on your front. So you restrict your sleeping patterns. Um, again, that's 
something you have to get used to. Did it take you long to get used to, um, like trying to sleep in different places? Because I know at night you just your body just automatically moves around, doesn't it? So yeah, I mean, I think I think subconsciously you do watch out for the bag and. I wake, 1.4 miles, they're left on 2204. I wake up um, in the night and um, because I've probably rolled over and it's sort of like uh, the bag is blown up um, and nine times out of ten it's just wind, but it blows the bag up. Um, do you have like a uh, dump valve on it? You know, like a little valve which you no. can just pull to help no. release the air? No, there's not, no, no there's not. Um, so you have to go and let the, let the air go into the bathroom, let the air out. Yeah, again, you have to always make sure that the you've always got plenty of air freshener around in the bathroom because it doesn't matter in one mile, they're left on 2204. You can say, oh, you know, that's a bit of a, when you go to the toilet, normally, it doesn't bear no, resem no resemblance at all to what the odor is you get coming out of the bag. I know about the, that the odor smell because when my mum had it, it, you know, and they changed the bags, it, it, it did leave a distinctive odor. I and mean, we were yeah. using lots of air freshener at the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's just one of them, it's just one of them things. I mean, I, although when I change my bag, my wife, I mean, I lay on the bed in the morning um, and I clean myself up and the wife puts the bag on for me. But, but does, how do you feel? I mean, do you feel with your um, wife changing the bag for you, do you feel like you've lost a bit of your kind of dignity bit of like your manhood do you see what I'm trying to get at here Tony? Yeah um, I don't know um, I've never thought about it like that it's just you just get on with it you just you just do things I mean I can I can I can change it myself um, and like now the bell's prolapsed because I've been working and the bell was where it was sort of like um, just slightly raised um, from the level of your skin, it now can without any sort of like notice can come out, can, the bell can actually come out about about two inches. Um, that's caused by me stretching, bending down, so it's prolapsed it, so now I can't physically do any any work as such because it restricts my bowel movement um, so now I wear what they call a hernia belt and it's a velcro belt and it fold you wrap it around yourself like an old-fashioned money belt and it keeps it in place is there anything that can be done surgically like eventually to um no. put that in or no. is that just going to be an ongoing problem that's, it. that's that's because the bow is i mean there's no nerves on the bow so you don't it, it doesn't you don't get no pain from it when it does pop out the outer skin area sometimes it feels like you've you've stretched it, overstretched it um so that's why i, I changed my bag lying down because when, when you lie down, the bowel goes inside itself again, inside inside the body, and it gives you it gives you um, you know time. For, you know it, it's easier to put the bowel on. I mean, better because you've got to, you've got to um, cut a hole and fit it over the over the uh, the stoma. Um, we've had to make it larger because when it starts to prolapse. And the hole wasn't big enough it ended up pushing the bag off mm. totally and then you get into a right mess um, and I've been out when that's happened and I've been covered um, and you just and that's because it's all like it's prolapsed it's come out for no reason you haven't overstretched or anything but because I overstretched in the beginning it's made that pathway through the bell clear so but yeah, it's you either 
you know, we'll get on with it and don't let it bother you, don't let it become a part of the negative part of your life or you, or you let it get negative and you start walking about saying worries me all the time and that ain't any part of me that's not my that's not my thing I mean I, I've still got plenty of, I've still got plenty of life to live I've got grandsons um, things I want to do with the missus you know places you want to go and see that sort of stuff so why would why do I want to why do I want to do anything like that? So that's why I'm, I've always got a positive attitude on my cancer. There's no point in being a moody git. Um, because it ain't going to get you nowhere at the end of the day. So yeah. So, but no, I don't. No, I'm not. I would like to, oh, I'd like to say a big thank you to Tony today for actually sharing his story. There he no is. No problem. And um, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please make sure you push the little magic button to subscribe, like my video, and leave a comment. And also, please, can you push the notification button? So I'm going to say ta-ta for now.